What's going on guys? Patrick back to you again with another track guide. This time it's going to be CTMP DDT. Getting started from turn one. We're going to look out for the first curb on our right hand side. This curb is pretty tall. I've actually seen pictures of people's cars like two wheeling in the air because they've taken the curb too aggressively and sort of like ramped up on it. So you don't want to do that. It's a tall curb. It's going to unsettle the car. I simply use it to touch my right wheels on so I know that the car is correctly placed for the following chicane. So if you look at any pictures of DDT, you'll see that it's like turn 1A, turn 1B, sort of hinting that it's a chicane, but if the car is in the right position, you can actually take it straight just as I have. Additionally, this little curb here, I'm using it as a reference and it's a consistency thing. Entering turn two, we can already see in the distance there is a cone placed, so I'm going to use that as the point at which I apex. Now you don't want to overslow the car entering turn two because it's a banked corner. Don't over brake. Use the bank gear. Okay, so on the exit of turn two, you're actually going to see that it's uphill and you end up cresting this uphill. I'm using the left hand cone as my reference it sort of defines where the hill transitions into the flat. What you don't want to do is have the steering wheel crooked as you crest. Think of if you had like a high powered rear wheel drive car, you were flat, but your steering wheel was slightly turned. You know, the, the rear end is gonna get loose on you. So you definitely wanna keep the steering wheel straight as you crest on the exit of turn two. So as you exit, aim for the cone, stay on your left to prepare for turn three. Turn three, you're gonna break right at the cone but you're gonna wanna use a different reference. If this cone or any other cone on the track moves for that matter, you're, you're gonna be missing your reference. You're gonna have to use something on the ground. Uh, sometimes I'm using people's like tire marks on the ground. You just wanna pick something consistent. I'm gonna geometric or maybe late apex this first curb in turn three. Turn three is kind of like an odd corner. There's a few curbs on the way up. It is an uphill corner. So you want to be careful with the way you approach the corner. So I'll show you the way that I'm personally choosing. Basically, there's the first curb here. And in theory, if I wanted to attack this curb and touch it or get close to it, I'd have to steer the car so much more. So what I'm actually doing is I'm keeping the wheel a little bit open. I'm going to stay about a car's width away from that curb for the sake of being flat. If I had to steer so much, there's no way I would have been flat on the gas. The car would have probably started to slide or something. And I actually end up choosing an even better apex point, which is right at the crest of turn three. So if we continue on, look closely, there is a curve here. The grass is curved. That is the point at which turn three crests. And that's the point where I'm gonna to try to keep my steering wheel straight keep it stable, and you'll notice as I shift up, I actually end up losing the rear end because maybe there was a slight steering angle or my shift wasn't proper, but the fact that I'm cresting up a hill just makes it a little bit more challenging. So be stable, stay to your right side in order to prepare for turn four. Turn four, deep braking, late apex. Pretty late apex, pretty much by the end of the curb here. There will be a cone there. Again, you don't need to use the cone. The curb is an immovable object. I'm going to short shift the car going up turn five because I don't want to shift in the corner. Geometric apex turn five. Keep to my right. Turn six. Uh, it's a downhill braking zone. You want to be careful here. Again, the elevation change makes DDT so much more uh, dynamic. So if I pitch the car too far forward in my braking, I'm going to lose the rear end. And that's something that's happened to me before. So keep your braking in a straight line. As you move down the hill, aim for a geometric apex on the curb or maybe a late apex. I personally find the geometric apex to be safe because I don't have to turn in later, which the grass ahead of you seems to be pretty close when you're going fast. So I'm doing about a geometric apex, feel safe, and I'm on throttle as soon as I apex to keep the rear end stable. You'll also notice what I'm doing is my steering wheel is pointed in one direction for the duration of turn six and turn seven. I'm not going to make any huge adjustments in angle. It's one position and it's a consistent position. So I'm trying to aim to do that repetitively. So if I need to make minor changes, at least I have a baseline to start. One angle, 
minor adjustments, but generally one angle, and then bring it into quarter eight. Corner eight, it seems like I'm turning early, right? Like my steering wheel is already turned, but the corner is right ahead of me. I'm looking ahead at the pair of cones that are usually placed by the alternative track route. What I'm doing is I'm basically trying to turn in so that I'm close to those two cones. It sets you up perfectly for the downhill turn nine. So we'll see here, the car is close to those two cones. I'm set up on the right side, downhill braking zone into turn nine now. You gotta be careful here if you have a car that doesn't have ABS. I'm locking up on the downhill if you get too greedy. So work up to your braking zone. Don't get too greedy on the downhill. And even if you do have ABS, you're just going to understeer past the apex, which is not what you want to do. I try to do like a geometric apex slash late apex on turn nine. Late apex doesn't seem like a bad idea here. Turn 10, sort of early apex, but it's negligible because it's such a small bend. Turn 11 downhill braking zone this is where i've had the most difficulty personally i'm usually pushing the braking zone way too far forward so i think work up to the braking zone here don't rush you're going to end up understeering and then taking a really bad exit we're going to go through turn 11 late apex right at the cone track out use the whole track you can get on power sort of confidently it's not um, a super dangerous corner where you're going to like slide out unless you're really greedy with it or you have a car with a lot of power turn 12 I'm going to geometric apex it. Generally, I'm just trying to be flat there and prioritizing my throttle. Turn 13, pretty important corner here, this bus stop. Um, what you'll notice is it's actually uphill, right? And the mistake I see a lot of people make, and I made the mistake a lot in the beginning, I'm braking way too early. I'm not using the uphill as an assist to my braking. I actually start braking heavily on the pavement change because that's when I can clearly see the uphill starting to begin. So here's the pavement change. This is where I'm like braking strongly. I'm using the uphill to assist me. I'm using the small inside curb as my apex point for the entry to 13. So it's sort of like a late apex because I want to track as straight as possible but, and use the a most amount of hill as possible for uphill braking. So if I were to keep my line tight here, you know, I finished the uphill in this distance, right? Pretty much from the curb to where I want to start turning. Alternatively, if I brake from here all the way to here, then the distance that the car is traveling uphill is so much longer. So you can push your braking zone even further, take more advantage of the uphill. And I think that this is where a lot of people are finding and losing a lot of time is this bus stop here. Not exactly sure if this is like a late or geometric apex. I'm thinking I should do it late so I can get on power sooner with the steering wheel a little bit more open. Turn 13 exit, you wanna track out to the left, use the full track. I think however, a mistake I'm making is on turn 14, I'm pretty much like a car's length away from this curb. I can improve my line by getting closer to that curb. A consideration you wanna make though is the more steering you do, the more the car slows down. I'll have to try out different methods and I invite you to try different methods for whatever works for your personal car. However, my car is light enough that, you know, adding that extra steering, decreasing the distance of the track that I'm following would be advantageous. And I don't have to worry about the car slipping by, you know, steering. I don't have to worry about the car slowing down too much because I'm not at the limit of the tires yet. Going down to turn 15, downhill braking zone. Again, don't push it. The main thing you wanna do for turn 15, ease into it and aim for a late apex on each curb on the chicane. So this is what I mean, ease into it. I think I might've apexed a little too early here. I could have apexed maybe later and get on the power sooner. But I'm trying to late apex slightly on each of those curbs and then use the whole track on the exit. Open up the wheel as soon as you can. So that's pretty much it. That is a 143 at DDT in a pretty stock BRZ on 215 size tires. It's such a complex course. Each corner is different. Each corner is meant to teach you something different. And that's why it's such an addictive track. It's really fun. The elevation changes are challenging to make full use of all of these elevation changes. It will take years. So really good track. Highly recommend it if you haven't been here before. I apologize for the lack of data on the screen. At this time when I drove the track, I didn't have my 10 Hertz GPS. This is the importance of good 
reliable data. Something we teach in our Applied Motorsports Data course. You want data that you can trust so you can actually create action on your data, on either the car or the driver. If you don't have good data, it's pretty much useless. In our description, you will also find the link to the B squared link tree where we've attached the syllabus to our Applied Motorsports Data course. So if you wanna take your driving and your understanding of vehicle dynamics to the next level, check out the link in the description and send us a DM on Instagram at bsquared.can or send us an email at info.bsquaredeng at gmail.com. Thanks for watching everybody. Have a good one. Have fun at DDT. It's a great track.